Hey everybody, welcome to True Talk. I'm Batman. <laughs> Alright, I can't do it the whole week. Guys, welcome to True Talk. My name is Mr. Pure Instinct, or as a lot of you guys know me at this point, MPI. This week I am joined by Philbo, Fishhook FPC, and as always, Mallet Editor. Guys, everyone, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. We have two new guests, which is this only the second time this has happened, like the whole season. So um, we get to uh, we get to interview both of them with the okay, scary interrogation <laughs> questions. Mallet has to take off her mask because she can't breathe, which is fair. I can't fair. breathe, man. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> That's way too close to my face. <laughs> 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 okay, but guys, I'm good. welcome to the Halloween show. We're going to talk about Halloween stuff. We've got Halloween trivia. It's going to be fun. Um, Philbo, man, thanks for joining us. How are you? Very good. How are you? I'm doing good. Are you prepared for uh, the interrogation questions? About 69%. All right. Prepared. Nice. 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 Okay, so... I'm also taking this mask off. It's too hot. Well, if everybody else is taking their masks off, I should, too. I'm leaving mine on because no, I'm you can, you can breathe in yours. That's fair. There's Yeah, there's, yeah. like, nothing here. That's why I chose this one for the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it was a whole-ass helmet, and I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Mine's just pushed up against my nose. Yeah. Yeah. Masks are rough, dude. Uh, so, Philbo, I have mm -hmm. um, some questions. To start off, though, can you give us kind of a brief overview of who you are as a streamer, your channel, um, and the story of how you got started streaming? So, um, as you know, my name is Philbo. Um, I started streaming uh, October last year. It was actually the, my first time I created my um, like my streaming setup was about the beginning of October, and I became affiliate on the 19th of November. Um, so just a, just a shy of a year um, of like properly probably streaming um streaming came about me as an accident i guess um i was playing a lot of rocket league with um a couple of guys and uh i found out that they were streaming and um got asked them about it and uh watched their channels show we had a lot of fun in there and their and their their own channels great community and was like i want that i want to be a part of that i want to do something like that myself and um took on board my own games give a bit of my own personality do it and start my own my own content and sell a video later i'm doing it awesome that is a pretty cool story man i i like it uh so let's get to the next one which i think is going to be the hardest question for you uh where did the username come from so <laughs> when i was younger i was a massive lord of the rings fan in fact, I still am a massive Lord of the Rings fan. Um, so much so that I used to be able to to quote the movies, and I've probably lost my touch on that now, but I used to be able to quote the movies, um, and I used to know all the characters' names. I even know all the little hobbits' names as well. Um, and when the final Lord of the Rings came out, um, I was the only one of my friends uh, who was willing enough to sit through all three movies back to back. So all nine and a half hours. Oh man. Um, so um, my real name's Phil and they ended up just calling me Phil Bo Baggins from now on. So I got <laughs> Phil, Bo, <laughs> Phil Bo Baggins all the, all the time from that one. Um, but I couldn't remember Phil Bo Baggins. So I just remember Phil Bo and, and to my friends still this time still call me Phil Bo as well. Um, and that's pretty much how I, how I got the name. I figured it was something like that, and I'm so happy that it is. I did, too. I, <laughs> so, so I'm glad that it was more than just, like, your name's Phil and you put Bo at the end of it. I'm glad that there was <laughs> there's a good backstory there. That's pretty cool. <laughs> You're taking the hobbits to Isengard. <laughs> to Isengard. To Isengard. <laughs> we could sit here all day and do I that can't imagine that. sitting there's through a all of those. <laughs> there's a 10-hour version on YouTube, so we can oh, all just Lord. start singing it, and that could be the whole show. There we go show's canceled Content. Uh, <laughs> so philbo what keeps you motivated to stream and what do you love about streaming um the motivational aspect of it is uh seeing my friends who some of them uh, who, who also stream as well and how much they have developed their own communities and and in the last couple of months i, I took a, a bit of a back step from it because of um work if i'm being honest um 
so I've tried to re- only restart uh, doing everything recently, and it's watching them and watching how in one particular um, one of my one of my friends how when I first met her about seven months ago I think it was, and how far she's come now it's unreal like uh, channel growth throughout the through through off the off the rick there she's got such a, a fantastic community which I'm involved in as well, uh, and I look at her and I'm just like damn. I, I, that's what I want to be. I, I need to. I need to get back involved, and uh, I need to, you know, be, be involved in that. If you know what I mean, and, and grow my own from there. Yeah, I feel that. Uh, so you said you're you're kind of just now getting back into it. Have you done the first stream back yet? Oh yeah, that was um like it was about five weeks where I didn't stream. Okay, and I started again probably beginning of this month. Probably getting back into it. Got my schedule back up, um, and so. It's good to see all, all the old familiar faces. Even though I was off for five weeks, it's it's surprising how it ha- it happens. I guess you know you, the the people who used to have there all the time you suddenly you disappear mm-hmm. and they no longer come back. So it's like I'm start oh, not not completely starting from scratch, but I'm rebuilding that trust to, with the people and 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 getting them back on board. Okay, yeah. How um how have you found coming back? Are you liking it as much as you did? Are you excited oh, to be it. back? Like. When when I wasn't streaming, me and another one of my friends who also streams, he he was in a similar situation. We were like playing a game and we were like, "Should we stream?" And I'm just like, <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't know. I, just, I can't can't be bothered. Can't be bothered to put the face on, if that makes sense. To put mm-hmm. the, to put the yep, to yep. put the face on to give the enthusiasm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To, to, so people want to be like, yeah, yeah, this is good. I, I'm enjoying this. Where it'd be like it's kind of sitting back playing the game and. Just have a bit of chit chat, but not really bothered. But that that's gone now that I'm actually back. It's just like yeah, hundred and ten percent, hundred miles an hour. It's like give everything or give nothing. Nice. That's awesome, dude. I kind of did the same thing. I took like three months off almost, if, I think, and mm. came back. And it's like it's tough. It's hard, and like you said, you're kind of almost like you're starting over, but you're not starting over. If that makes sense. But it's also mm-hmm. when you come back, it it all feels. It's very familiar but different because it's like you're yeah. recharged and you're ready to go. Plus, when I hadn't found my like my niche, like mm-hmm. I said, I was a variety streamer and I was streaming this, that, and everything. And Ow. I streamed, um, I streamed Outlast. No, sorry, I streamed Soma for the first time because someone said to, um, to 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 play it, and it was a bit of a scary game. And um, people were uh, it was scare uh, scaring me throughout the game, sound alerts, etc. And they found it hilarious, and that became my niche. So from Soma it went to Outlast, it went to other horror games, um, and that's pretty much it um, from there. And then on top of the horror games and playthrough storylines that I do, I do um, Escape from Kharkov now. So they're like my two main main genres that I stick to. Don't do everything. Okay, uh, I'm gonna ask you this question later but i have one that you 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 reminded me we're going to talk about later with horror games okay so uh philbo man thanks for letting us know all that stuff is there anything else that you want to let everybody know about you about your stream you'll get another chance to talk about stuff at the end but just anything that we didn't cover that you have off the off the top of your head no nothing nothing strikes off the top of my head not at all, not at all. appreciate the the chance to speak yeah man we're glad to have you on here uh it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun show i think Real quick, I have a question. Is that your okay. emote that people keep spamming in chat? Because that's amazing, <laughs> and I love it. It's that. It's that one. Your oh, chat. Oh yeah. Your, your community is very, very enthusiastic. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. I was looking yeah, at I, that too. I, before uh, before stream today, uh, Phil was was streaming <laughs> a little bit earlier, and I stopped by just to like, you know, I'm going to be on the show. I want to see his stuff. And uh, just the infectious enthusiasm of of his his chat is just awesome. It's one oh. of the better communities. Appreciate like, it. Thank you very much. Seen in a while, yeah. I mean, look <laughs> at it. Jeez. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> they're killing yeah. it, man. It's hype. I it love is hype it for sure. <laughs> All right, dude. Thanks, well, dude. again, thank you. We're gonna throw it up to Fishhook FPC, my boy. For those of you that don't know, uh, Fishhook is been like my best friend for what like six years or something yeah i mean so so we knew each other in high school but we weren't really like best friends best friends yeah that really came like after college so yeah yeah, it's probably been like five six years all right i got 
Take it off. Take it's, that mask it's, off. It's yeah, squishing it my nose. <laughs> Lame. You gave up. You gave up. You took yours Lame. off before me. Hush. Yeah, but I have makeup on underneath. Me, so I win. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, Fishhook, we're going to go through the same questions with you, and then cool. we'll get into random topics of the night and some Halloween trivia. So, again, to start it off, can you give me a brief overview of who you are as a streamer, your channel, and how you got started with streaming? So I've been doing online video game content God knows how long. I've been uh, back in the halcyon days of YouTube of 2008, 9, give or take. My brother and I did uh, Mario Kart Wii YouTube videos. <laughs> um, this Kidding. was my brother when we were like, I would have been like, 15 16 he would have been like 18 19 somewhere in there and uh i've been hooked ever since i've wanted to make online video for ages i did a vlog for a while that obviously didn't work out because i didn't make it <laughs> the big vlog boom of uh, of youtube of the early 2010s miss out um, on that casey neistat stuff right <laughs> right exactly yeah, yeah yeah i was a big i was a big vlog brothers guy if that means anything to you mm. um i was young okay. I, I'm not proud. Anyway, uh, um, so um, did that for a long time. Got back into the gaming stuff. Uh, I remember going onto a wonderful website called Twitch a long time ago um, and thinking it was pretty cool, but not really having the equipment to do it. Um, I did a YouTube channel with a young man named Mr. Fear Instinct for a little bit. Uh, Spark Gaming. We have a beautiful couple name. It's very sweet. We do. Oh, now I have to look this up. Yeah. Oh, they're still on my my current channel. They're yeah. archived you in a playlist. Want to look at your courage. Oh, you rebranded? <laughs> yeah. You rebranded it. Yeah. Uh, I actually found 250 some odd gigs worth of our old footage and content Aww. when I was Aww. moved put it my new put my hard drive in my PC and it all That's... got put on back there there's a 6 terabyte backup drive that it all just got dumped on there in Spark archive. <laughs> I have you know, no idea what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to do something right? with it. You know you haven't changed your channel description, right? That doesn't surprise it's, me. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds like <laughs> it. Okay. All right. But um, anyway, circling it back, um, I got properly into Twitch streaming uh, like two-ish years ago, um, give or take. Uh, tried it for a while, was sort of struggling to find my niche, sort of struggling to figure out what I was going to be streaming, what I was going to be doing. I tried being a retro streamer. I tried being, you know, current games. I tried doing just Nintendo stuff. I did all sorts of things. Um, and then about three months ago or so, I think it was about three months ago, uh, have y'all ever heard of this website called Mixer? Does this mean anything to you? I've, I've heard people talk of the Mixer. Isn't that um, that thing that Ninja is, started? Is that that guy that you know that guy called Cloud or whatever it is or Cloud? Sure, yeah, or... yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was there's another one, uh, uh, Ninja, I think is his name. Mm, never heard. Yeah, of that guy. Never, never heard of him. I've heard of Samurai. <laughs> Samurai. That yeah, that's the one. I'm sorry, my bad. Um, but um, whenever the whole Ninja to Mixer thing happened, I sort of took a hard look at Mixer and I was like, you know, this is this is somewhere where I can maybe find my niche. Uh, and because it's owned by Microsoft, and I was a big fan of the Forza Horizon games, um, I was like, maybe this is something I can give a shot. And I've I've found it re- very rewarding and very successful. So now a days, uh, I am a streamer exclusively on Mixer. Uh, I stream every single Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. I stream a lot of racing games, fighting games, and trading card games. So I'm kind of a competitive gaming kind of head. Uh, but not very good. So if you want to like be see somebody with that competitive mindset, but doesn't necessarily have the talent <laughs> to make it <laughs> as an esports guy, um, that's kind of my thing. Uh, I, I love a lot of competitive games, and I like like diving deep into like what makes you know a meta interesting and things like that. And I'm also just a goofy person. Just, I'm a committed goofy human being, as I'm sure you can tell. Can confirm. Nope, not at all. <laughs> can confirm uh well cool so what is the story behind the username where did okay. fishhook fpc come from all right so this one there's kind of a long winding road on this one so <laughs> uh i'm a big fan of professional wrestling uh let's get that out of the way um some people take that as like a, a, a brand uh, i take it as a sign of courage 
say out loud. <laughs> um, there was this wrestler in the mid 2000s named Austin Aries. I believe he's still active, but he hasn't really been in major promotions for a long time. Um, he would do this crazy move where he would fish hook a guy's mouth and have them in an arm bar at the same time. Look up fish hook of doom Austin Aries on YouTube sometime, and it, it looks wild. It looks absolutely ridiculous. Now it's on our way yeah, right like, now. Now it's on yeah. our way. Yeah. Thought this was like the coolest thing in the history of mankind, right? <laughs> so uh, whenever I started going to forums for uh, professional wrestlers, uh, the initial name was Fishhook. It was just Fishhook. Um, That's disgusting. <laughs> I know. It's so gross. That's revolting. It's so gross, right? Uh, you want to talk about a horror-themed episode? That is some horrible stuff. Okay, when um, is it? I got to look it up again. It's so <laughs> gross. It's pretty gross. Yeah, I'm going to level with you. It's pretty gross. Is Fishhook what? Fishhook of Doom. Is of, the name of Doom. The name. Yeah. Um, so That's so metal. The initial name was Fishhook. Um, and then FPC got added on because there was a website called Fire Pro Club. There's a wrestling game called uh, Fire Pro Wrestling. Um, that was really big in Japan and has a big sort of following. Um, and I was playing those games for a while and talking with those guys about wrestling and about the game. Uh, and so to rep them, I put FPC at the end of the username. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, well, cool, man. What is it then that you like so much about streaming and creating content? I mean, you've been you've been doing it on and off for ten years now. God, yeah. B Oof. Believe that or not. Uh, so, what is it that keeps you coming back? What do you love about it? Um, I think it's um, it's a creative outlet. So, I'm a video editor by trade. I edit video for a living. Um, but I don't necessarily get to be super creative in my day-to-day -day work. Like, my day-to-day -day works in television news. So, like, mm -hmm. I don't... You don't get to be creative in TV news. It's mm -hmm. like, here's what happened today. Blah, 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 you know, right? So, I, for me, it's a creative outlet. It's a way to to mark myself in terms of how am I getting better as a creator? As someone who is, you know, working towards trying to be better every day, I can look back at my stuff that I made when I was 17 years old and go, Oh, this sucks. I've gotten so much better than I was, then, <laughs> you know, um, and even, you know, further on than that, I can look at some of the Twitch stuff that I did, you know, even two years ago where I was really felt like I was struggling and wasn't particularly motivated. Whereas lately, like, do I have some doubts? Sure. Do I have some stuff that I'm not certain about? Sure. Um, but I think I'm making more or less the best stuff I've made in a very long time. So it, it's just, it's a measuring stick, you know, and like, for me, every single Tuesday and Thursday is a way to measure, like, okay, can I make something creatively involved and interesting, and can I make something that other people will enjoy? And and I love measuring myself up against that. Awesome. That's a really good reason, man. I, I like that. Story. I like that. And it's, it's, it's different, I think, for you, because, like, you go to work and you edit videos every day, but it's like, chop, 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 chop. And that's like, yeah, right. like there's no creative outlet there at all. But right. everyone hears video editor and they're like, that guy's creative all the time. And that's not nah. true at all. Nope. The vast majority of what I get to do on a day-to-day -day basis is, oh, here's this random, you know, national story from CNN. I pull the video down from their FTP. I go chop, chop, chop. Here's my four shots. Boom, ship it. That's the vast majority of what I do on a daily basis. Uh, lately, that's changed a little bit. I've gotten to do a little bit more like cold opens and stuff like that that are kind of interesting. Uh, but by and large, most of what I do is just chop, 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 go, chop, 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 go. It's I compare it to working in an assembly line, but I get to protect my body, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, but otherwise, the mentality is is basically the same. Hmm. Well, cool. Um, Fishhook, is there anything you want to let everybody know about the channel that we didn't cover, about you that we didn't cover, just anything off the top of your head? I make better videos than MPI, and you should watch me instead. I'm kidding. It's pretty uh -oh. accurate. <laughs> it's pretty accurate. I don't remember the last time I uploaded a video. Uh, I, I don't upload anything on YouTube anymore either. But, uh, no, I think we, we sort of covered the bases. Um, like I said, I'm, I added the stream on Sunday recently. That's something that I'm pushing kind of hard. And uh, more or less, uh, I, uh, I'm i new to this community. I just got my true affiliation a month ago, mm -hmm. like almost exactly a month ago. 
So Man, it's already you been know, that long. Like, this is me. Welcome to me. Yeah, yeah. It's I, I looked it up. It was like October first. Dang. So it's that's awesome. Almost a month. Yeah. So this is me. Welcome to me. It's brand new world. I don't even have my shelf built yet. I just moved. So you can see. <laughs> Just nonsense behind me. That's okay. I've lived in this house for two years, and there's still nonsense behind me. I feel that, dude. It happens. That. It's part of life, I think. Well, cool, man. Thanks so I much, mean, both of you guys, for coming on. And uh, Mallet, as always, thanks for joining me. Uh, you're so, stuck with me, man. Y'all want to talk about some Halloween stuff? Uh, yeah. Okay. No. So. All right. I'll tell you what. Let's start with that. Candy corn, yes or no? Heck yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. Big yes. old yeah. yes. All right. Here's a, can I add a caveat to this? No. I'll be this the judge thing. of it. Okay. So my mom does this. I don't know if anybody else does this. I'm sure other people do. I like candy corn, but only when it is mixed with something salty. My mom mm. mixes candy corn and salted peanuts. And that is incredible. That sounds pretty good. It is incredible. Candy corn on its own, it's like, yeah, okay, I'll eat it if it's there, but I'm not, like, pumping the fist. You know what I mean? I'm not stoked about it. I have I a whole like bag. This is an American thing. It is. What's, yeah, it's very <laughs> much American. Thing. It's a very American thing. <laughs> I like it. Um, I'm kind of the same way, though. Like, if it's there, I'll eat it. But if it's not, then cool. Like... I'm not going to go out of my way to get it, but my mom like always had it at the house during Halloween when I was a kid. And she also mm-hmm. had like, they weren't candy corn. They were like pumpkins. Have you guys seen oh, those? Yeah. They're like candy corn pumpkins, yeah. but they don't taste like pumpkin. Thank God. Um, and it was just like a glass bowl of those. So I would just like walk by and just be like big old handful of it and just like chewing as much as I could because it's chewy as sin. And uh, I would just walk around the house eating it. So yeah, I like it, but again, I'm not gonna like go out of my way for it. But I know some this people are a- are like absolutely not. Yeah, this I see is some, candy corn. I see? see some people asking in chat what a candy corn is. I, it, it sort of tastes like it, it. Honestly, just tastes like sugar. Yeah, the, it I mean, it's, it's straight sugar. It's yellow, orange, and white sugar in a triangle. That's it. Yeah, it has sort of a <laughs> waxy texture to the outside of it, mm-hmm. but other than that, it's it's sugar. That's I assume all. that's what holds the sugar in its shape. <laughs> Yeah, is is much. the waxy sugar? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man. They had this thing at the state fair a couple weeks ago called the Candy Castle, and it was amazing. A giant tent full of candy, and you were given a bucket, and you paid by the pound. So I made sure to pick up some candy corn for the season. Obviously, obviously, obviously for the season. Right. Uh, okay, so that was a, an easy question. Um, so Philbo, you brought up horror games earlier, and mm-hmm. I want to know. All, for all of you guys, what is your favorite horror, or if you don't play full-on horror games, spooky themed game? Because there are plenty no. of games that have like that, like spooky Halloweeny vibe to it, but aren't like in your face, scary and terrifying. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's a difficult question to answer. It's hard for me too because I really like horror stuff. Like mm-hmm. horror movies and games are my jam. Uh, so it's hard so for me to I, pick one. I I. Uh, ironically, I'm not the biggest fan of horror games. I love playing them, but the only reason I play them is because it makes people laugh <laughs> when I oh. squeal like a girl. That's a fair enough reason. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I, I, so based on that, the, the scariest game... I mean, there's some old school. There's some old school classics out there. There's like, there's like Outlast, for example. There's Amnesia, which are fantastic games. Old school. The most recent game that I've played, which has given me some of the biggest frights, is probably uh, one which is still being created, and it's made. Got chapter one and chapter two, which is Visage or Visage, depending on. I knew how whenever you, you said that, that's what it was gonna be. Um, they're currently making chapter three and chapter four. Um, it's it's not a fully developed game, mm-hmm. um, but wow, that game's Just, terrifying. <laughs> wow, some of the ge- some of the stuff that happens it just just oh, like for me, and my and my guys know this. There's two things. There's two things. Sorry, there's technically three things that I absolutely hate. Now, whether that be a horror film, horror game, or even just imagine it in real life, I've got a window there. And I look at the window when I said this, but 
You know, faces at windows. Yes. <laughs> faces at windows. No. Nah. <laughs> yep. Babies crying. That's babies terrifying cr- no. in general. Babies, babies crying. I've got a. And I don't mean that. I don't mean that just to upset baby. I mean like, it's quiet, it's dark, and there's a baby crying. Yeah. Type of <laughs> atmosphere. Are you with me on that one? Nope. Like, yeah. Yeesh. They're, they're the biggest one in in corridors. Okay. Long, long corridors. I can dark, see that. Long corridors. Nah. Now envisage. Or visage, there's a one part of the game where there's a long corridor, and at the end of the corridor, there's a spooky little girl who's crying. And I'm just, there's a there's a there's a very good clip of me, and I just go, nah, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like nope, so, nope, nope. I just nope. did the same thing. <laughs> I uh, I played Blair so, yeah. Witch. Um, and that game goes from not scary to terrifying in like the matter of like two seconds, maybe. But there's yeah. one part, the first jump scare that came up, I stopped, put my headphones down, and just said nope and walked out of the room. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm out of mm-hmm. here, man. But no, that's a fantastic game. People should play that, even yeah. if they don't. Even even if they don't think scary games are scary, it's it's a very it's a cryptic puzzle based horror. game. And it's got an element of um, psychology to it, where, and so especially in chapter two, where you expect something to happen, and it doesn't, mm. and then it or might, and then something totally inconspicuous, where you, because you're always on edge during the game, you're right. always on edge, because one of the ghosts can spawn at any time and chase you, or some one of the doors, the lights could flicker, anything can happen, so you're constantly expecting something to happen but then when you're least expecting something to happen like when you get into a nice room and it's all fine things happen and it just throws you off guard honestly yeah but no. i haven't played that one but i've watched a lot of people play it and it's it's pretty good <laughs> uh what about you mallet or fishhook do you guys have like a horror or spooky themed game i'm sure mallet i have an idea of yours um <laughs> i'm wearing it yeah <laughs> I'm a dead by daylight person. If y'all been sticking around, y'all know that. Um, I just like hanging people on meat hooks because it makes me wash away the terrors of my day better. So therefore, I take it out on other people by stabbing them in the face and hanging them on a hook. Yay! I'm but gonna I do get write. I'm scared by my own killer stuff, <laughs> like doctor, doctor, um, doctor apparitions, hag traps, spirit husk. I get jump scared by my own killer abilities i've definitely seen it you all, almost always get jump scared by your own stuff i know so it's like it's still scary even though i'm playing the person because i don't like playing survivor i scream like a baby when i play survivor playing against michael myers is the worst because like you're on a generator and then you turn around it's like, oh my gosh he's staring at me yep <laughs> so that's why i play the killer because it hurts my heart a tad bit less but even then i still scream like a child so but anyway i like hanging people on meat hooks because fun and it makes me feel better about my day yay i want to write an anime about that <laughs> like just okay. this super upbeat happy girl who's just like i hang people on meat hooks because it makes me feel better about my day job ha <laughs> <laughs> death <laughs> There's, there is definitely an anime trope about that i think it's is it sundere something like that I no think- sundere is the one who's like uh, I'm, I'm not doing because I like you or anything. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's there you go. Sundari. Okay. Yeah, that is definitely an anime trope, though. I feel like I've definitely before. Who knows? I yeah, just I'm su- know. I'm sure I don't is. actually. I don't handle jump scares very well. I was watching a horror show on Netflix once called The Haunting of Hill House. Oh god, and it was so it, good. But yeah, I know. Oh. But like, there was this super tense moment, and I was watching it in the middle of most rec- of um Dorian, Hurricane Dorian, that came mm-hmm. and hit. Where I live, and so I'm home, and my power flickered. Nope. Right in the middle yep, of this nope. super tense section, and I jumped about three feet in the air out of my chair. <laughs> and then I ran outside into the hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> Take a bit of effort. I'm on the third floor. <laughs> but if we didn't get hit all that bad. It was, I mean, my power didn't even go out, but yeah. <laughs> I, get, right. I don't do horror very well because I get jump scared very easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, man, that show was so good. You should it get it. Was. 
I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but dude, episode five, I I had I do not walk away from horror things. I took a break. I was like, dang. It, it was blew so my mind. I had that I was, was a hell of a lot. Well it was also the just like it was like was the twist too. too. I was just like Is this Blair Witch, sorry? Oh, no, it's called it's, it's a show on Netflix called The Haunting of Hill House. I, 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 I was gonna say I've, I've, I've lost the, the last bit there, but I've seen Horton in her house, and it, it is a so it good. is a game. Yeah, yeah, it is a um a TV series that you must watch. Yeah, they just even if you don't like horror films, you just have to watch yeah, it. Yeah, my it's mind tense. was it's tense, broken <laughs> for a little while. The twist, the twists and turns. Oh. Right, that's like, why I had ev- to walk ev- away. Every episode had a twist. I know. Yeah, but just for me, it was the, just the camera work. Oh yeah! yeah. Like, Overall, the, the show was, was some of the best fantastic. I've ever seen. Yeah, so, it was yeah. very well made. Also, if you're a, a, a cinematographer nerd like we are, yeah, that that sounds like the reason I would watch it. Anything horror themed gets suggested to me, I'm like, uh, probably no. Probably <laughs> We're not. gonna not I'm do a that. Giant baby, I will immediately crawl under the couch and die. Um, I will As... perish watching this yeah. film. How dare you suggest it to me? As someone who's right there with you with crawling under the couch and dying, there are a couple of major jump scares. The horror really comes from tension and world building and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So you cool. would probably, like, I was okay. The only reason I jumped so badly that one time is because, like, of an out external source. Yeah. My right. power going crazy. So you would probably be okay. It's, uh, okay. it's more of like a psychological horror. Sure. Mm-hmm. I can deal with that. That's fine. Yeah, you might my brain's you. messed up. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think you're friends with us? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, so then, Fishhook, do you have like a spooky game that you like at all? Um, I, you know, I tried to play it on stream recently, and my poor PC couldn't handle it, even though it's ten freaking years old. My PC is great. Um, Alan Wake. Oh God, that Ooh. game was amazing. I love Alan Wake. So, you know, it, it's basically if Stephen King was a video game, mm-hmm. essentially. Um, you know, the, it's about this. If you haven't played it before, I mean, it's a 10-year-old game. So, like, maybe you haven't. Um, you know, it's about a novelist who goes out to uh, with his wife to a, a cabin in the middle of nowhere uh, on a lake. And it deals a lot with themes of darkness and light. And it's his sort of psychological torment of being a horror writer and trying to write his next book and sort of his psychological breakdown as it goes. Um, That game is just awesome. And the the thing about it is, is that the gameplay itself isn't all that scary. Mm -hmm. Like there's no, I I can't think of an instance. There's like maybe one jump scare at the very beginning of the game. Yeah. Like, and even then I think it was like just a loud sound. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I just played it the opening sequence on stream before my, Lovely computer died. Thank you, computer. Love you. Um, <laughs> uh, it was, uh, you're in the cabin and it's dark and you're trying to find a way to turn the light on. And oh, yeah, that's right. And there's like a, <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. Like, it, I think it's like a TV turns on. Yes. It like turns on like and it's like loud static. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's like white. Like right. Just, I've just literally finished playing it. Oh, oh yeah. I played it on Xbox when it first came out in like 2009, I think, my guys. Right. Yeah. Like, you said and I, I came, it was on offer on Epic. Um, so I bought it and uh, I just finished like last week uh, playing it. And so it's like fresh in my head what, you, what you're saying. And yeah, that's a, that's, that's a classic game, that I, really good story. Oh, I, yeah. It, the, the story of that game is fantastic. And like, I, even though my lovely computer doesn't seem to want to stream it very well, I'll probably still play it uh just mm. casually on my own around this time because it, it's it's a time you want to play it. it's almost 10 i think it is almost exactly 10 years old now so yeah, yeah. Like, it, it's a great time to go revisit mm-hmm. it so it, it's fantastic and it's uh out on other platforms now mm-hmm. um, yeah it's it just got it got put on the epic game store recently it's epic, been on it's steam on, it's on for sale, a while sale. it's still on sale right now as well yeah there you go oh yeah and it was on sale for what like a buck 50 or something like crazy I, I picked it up really cheap. I think it was about five pounds. Or um, yeah, I think here in the states it was like four dollars thirty. Yeah, it was like, like dirt cheap. It's and it's absolutely worth every penny of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. Did, and I think it comes with all the DLC too. Well, uh, American Nightmare is free. The right. DLC is free on Epic right now, right, which is like a half new game. I don't know if either of you right, guys yeah. have played that. 
I haven't played it. Um, I have it installed on my Xbox, and I keep intending to go to it, and I just never have. Okay. Um, it's hmm, it's okay. Um, the gameplay feels similar, um, but there are part like the story for it just didn't didn't get me. It wasn't as yeah. fun. Um, but I would still play it. I would still recommend playing it. It's just uh, it's not as good. Um, I think if I have to look back, I I'm torn between like a ton of horror games that i really like but i'm torn between two um and those are outlast and pt so outlast i have really good memories of because the first time i played it i played it with a group of people and none of us could get through it like every time we would even like start to get a little bit scared be like no it's your turn and like hand the controller around (laughs) uh and then i was like you know what no i'm gonna play this game so my friend uh my friend from high school, who I actually did a whole series on the DLC of Outlast with, came over to my house and we played it, and we just we just drank while he played it and got progressively more intoxicated. And by the end of it, I was sprinting through the halls of the game, just being like, "I wish you'd chase me. I'm not even scared." <laughs> and from that moment forward, I was never scared of the game. <laughs> but it's one. Of, it's such a fun like party game to be like, "Okay, mm. this game's really scary." but you have to play it. And then you hand the controller to somebody and they start to play it. And they're like, I can't, I can't do this. And I'm over there just laughing because I've played it. So I know what's going to happen. Um, we do this at the party we had at your place. That would have been hilarious. Did you come up with any names for the, any of the characters? <laughs> I did. No, seriously. <laughs> um, so the two guys that are um, <laughs> without pants, uh, I named the Dingaling twins. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I had so, so one one of the community had um, the Donger brothers, and there was also there was also there was also Captain Short and Corporal Schlong. Those are so done, good. We're, we're getting canceled. This show's over. Those are so good. Oh my god. How old are we? Those are How amazing. Are we? There's just two guys that are just walking around naked for no reason in the you game. Got no idea. And but, but it's just it's it's not the fact that they're naked. They're just, I mean, I mean it's pretty. They're pretty right. well endowed. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's something for sure, We're man. <laughs> oh my god. So with uh with PT, I uh, I remember like they announced it, and I was sitting in my old apartment with my college roommate at the time, and I had my computer in the living room. I think still before I moved it to my bedroom and I was sitting at my computer and I was like watching the whatever game show that it was at, that they announced it. And they were like, yeah, uh, this is PT. It's going to be scary and you can download it right now. And I like didn't hesitate. Didn't say a word, picked up my PlayStation controller, downloaded it, went and woke up my roommate. Cause he was asleep. And I said, come play this with me. He's like, what is it? And I was like, it looks terrifying. It's going to be amazing. And he was like, okay. I'm in. And he came and sat on the couch and we played it and I had my laptop out and there's a, a Facebook group I'm in called I Watched the Entire Overblood Super Replay uh, which yeah. is based off of Game Informer if you guys remember Game Informer. Uh, so I almost said RIP but they still exist. They do. Uh, that's a whole nother, that, That's a whole podcast. That's a whole I podcast. That's a whole thing. Yeah. yeah. So I posted it and I was like hey I'm playing PT. Who else is playing? And everybody was like and a bunch of people were like oh yeah we're playing it. And then someone said, what do I do at this part? And people started answering it. And we wrote a guide for the game in the Facebook comments together with all of us online and my roommate there. And I was this close to calling into work that day to keep playing. And I only worked like a four-hour shift. I was like, I'm about, I'm about to call it sick. <laughs> it was, but, dude, it was a blast. It was so much fun. And like those kind of things are what I like about gaming when it like brings people together. It's so cool. Along those lines, uh, I was thinking about this whenever you mentioned uh, playing Outlast together. Mm -hmm. Um, A similar game that, I mean, it's not, it's a different sort of game, but it's a game you can have a bunch of people in the same room making decisions together, but one person sort of driving the ship is Until Dawn. Uh, oh, yeah. that's, mm. that's actually how I experienced that game. I have never, there you go. (laughs) I have never played it myself. I love this game. Uh, I've never played it myself, but I've been in the room while other people are playing it, and I'm just yelling stuff like, ah, kill that guy! I don't care about that guy! Right. Get him out of here! This guy's terrible! 
Yeah, that one's out. annoying, so she can die, and he can <laughs> die because I feel like it. Yeah, save her. I uh, I one hundred percent uh shot a character because I hated the character. Yep. <laughs> My chat was so upset with me. They were like, "No, don't do it." And I was like, "Shut up! I'm doing it." <laughs> Did not care about their opinion for a second yeah, I, at that. I remember point. when that game came out, and I was watching like the gaming YouTubers play it because I don't own a console. So, like, I watched Markiplier did it and oh, lost yeah. one of the characters, and he got so upset about it, he unplugged his game and completely restarted. <laughs> oh, my God. Because he was so that's, upset. That's more and intense talking, than I am. This was, like, this was, like, in the middle of the game. So he lost a good chunk of gameplay by doing that. And then another one, I think it was Jacksepticeye, he almost had a perfect run-through until the very end of the game where Oof. he ended up losing a bunch of characters in succession. Yep. So... <laughs> So, so it's like it was really interesting. Um, I don't have the case in here; it's in the other room still. But um, there, the people who made Until Dawn, um, oh god, it's gonna bother me if I don't look at their studio name. Uh, Supermassive Games is working on a, another series that they're calling the Dark Anthology, mm-hmm. and it's gonna be a yearly release. So the the first one came out this year. It's called Man of Medan. Yeah, um, I saw that. And it's yep. the same way, but it actually has a game mode in it where it's made to be like a theater style where you're handing it off to people and things like that. And then mm-hmm. next year they've already got a, one announced and there's supposed to be a couple more after that, I think. Oh my God. Dude, they're still so good. They're still L- so Little much Hope's fun. Next. Which one is it? Little Hope. Little Hope. That's it. That's it. That yeah. one looks so Me- good. Me and um, me and Green Vulture, who's in chat, where uh, every Saturday we mm-hmm. do we play it every Saturday together as a co-op online, Ooh. and there's eighteen outcomes yeah. in the game. There's, there's so many outcomes, and we've only discovered six. Six I think Vulture, maybe five, maybe six, and everything. It, it's it, it's a story based game. You, you, every decision impacts the game. Mm-hmm. So you make one decision, it'll lead to another decision, and then it just ah, oh, you, you have to play it. It's such a good game. Yeah, that game is really good. I I need to go back and do some of the other endings because like I look, I'm I'm one of the people who I don't care about secret like achievements and trophies. Right. I do achievement hunting and trophy hunting, but I don't just like aimlessly go about and try to get a secret one. I look up what the secret one is. Mm -hmm. So I know some of the endings for trophies and I'm like, man, I have to, that's it. Like I have to think about how to do that to get it. Right. So I want to go back and do that. Cause that game is, it's so good. It's super fun. Mm -hmm. Those games almost feel like to me, whenever I, cause I haven't played uh, them myself, but I've watched other people play them. Mm-hmm. They almost feel like sort of the natural evolution of the style of game that uh, Telltale was sort of making. Exactly. They, it, it sort of feels like the next step, whereas Telltale sort of like was just like, oh, we'll just keep writing stories and never advance the gameplay ever. Yeah. It sort of feels like Until Dawn and now Man of the Dan has sort of advanced the gameplay of those style of games forward, mm-hmm. which, mm-hmm. Is, which is really cool to see that because it's a genre that doesn't really get... I mean, they got a lot of love in the in the mid-2000s, but it doesn't really get a ton of love anymore, especially now that Telltale's in this weird zombie fugue state of maybe existing, maybe not. Right. Um, so it, it's it's really cool to see. And I watched MPI play that game, and it's it, it looks really cool. It looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's so good. If you like uh, horror stuff or just like not super gameplay intensive games that follow a good story. I would check it out for sure. Both that and until dawn. I think I liked until dawn a little bit more. Um, but I liked the new one too, but until dawn was a bigger game. I think that's the general vibe I see online too, is that until dawn is bigger and better and you should play that first. But if you enjoyed it, then this is a nice little bite-sized chunk that can sort of carry you by. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's nice because we have a new one coming like every year for a little while. Right, right. Cool. Uh, Philbo, I see you just put in there in, in chat. Conrad, no shoes. Do you? Do you guys feel? Do you feel <laughs> like people just didn't have shoes randomly, and then sometimes they would? Because I felt like when I played through it, there were times where like that person didn't have shoes, and then the next scene they had shoes. Or like the first time I played through it, they didn't have shoes. The second time they had their shoes on, and I was like, "What's happening with your shoes? Put your shoes on." Shoes suck. 
I, not, shoes are look, the worst. Man, That's if, why they don't have them on. If I'm walking through a metal old death trap of a ghost ship, I'm putting on my freaking shoes. Yeah, I want some no. damn shoes if I'm walking through that ship. No, shoes zero, zero doubt. If I had a choice between shoes and no shoes, I would pick no shoes. Because shoes suck. They're the worst. I hate them. Uh, as right. a counterpoint, if I have a choice between tetanus and no tetanus, I'm going to pick the tetanus. <laughs> That's what the tetanus vaccine is for. That's what the vaccine is. Wait, wait, this became quite a big thing when we were playing it. Like, why has he got these shoes on? Why is she, <laughs> it was for us, where too. It, it, we, we realized that it, it depends on the character's relationship and, oh. and how they are. So it's not, it's not based on it's, they don't have shoes full stop. Because Alex doesn't have shoes if you don't fall in love with Julia. If you That's do fall in so love with Julia, weird. she has shoes. What a what weird way to do that? that. Because later in the game, you, she trips. It, so it's, it, if you have shoes during the running sequences, it makes it easier to not fall over and you don't have the, um, the command to... Do you know what it's, what's it called? The the, the skill check. Mm -hmm. You don't have skill checks for people tripping over. Huh. I guess is it maybe like it's is it maybe based off of like positive choices so that person like has more to live for, I guess? Every 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 choice has a consequence, regardless if it's a good choice at the time. That's so weird. Wow. Phil, huh. Phil, I think you blew their minds. Dang. That's it's, deep. That's it, that's a deep dive, it, man. It's, it's true. Depend uh, I don't know. I don't want to say some. I don't want to spoil it, but there's, right. there's a certain part of the game where if you do it with one particular character, it has a different outcome than if you do it with another particular character. And you can choose the character by the conversation that happens prior to it. Mm -hmm. And one outcome is only possible if you choose one particular character. So it's it it's literally is consequences and. Yeah, it's it's a mind blowing game. It is a mind blowing game. It's a very frustrating game as well. It can be, man. That's so crazy. That's wild, yeah, huh. for sure. Well, uh, okay, okay then. Uh, so, next Halloween question for you guys: If you can remember back, what was your favorite Halloween costume that you've ever had? I <laughs> hmm, I'm trying to think. Uh. I got one. Uh, if you've got one, go ahead, because I'm still I'm, oh, I'm yeah, sort of between think. two. Yeah. yeah I'm when I was two. so I grew up in the South, and in the South, it's very common for communities to revolve around the church. And at these churches in the South, it's very common for them to eschew, eschew whatever the word is, that to not allow normal Halloween costumes. So the church I went to was no different, and it was just biblical costumes for years and years and years and years and years. Which you can get some pretty creepy costumes out of Bible stuff. But yeah. when I was 11, they relaxed the rule finally and just said, you can dress up as whatever you want as long as it's not, like, demonic. So, or, like, super inappropriate. So I had got this gypsy costume. And we had a costume contest, and I got third. And I was excited. So, yeah, that was my favorite. <laughs> okay. There you go. I know. Lame. Um, I talked about this uh, before stream with y'all, but uh, a few years ago, uh, I think it was uh, 2016, so this was as an adult, as a grown-ass man, <laughs> um, I purchased, if anybody in chat has ever played the game No More Heroes, the Suda51 game uh, that came out for the Wii in like 2007, 8-ish or so, um, the lead character of that game is a guy named Travis Touchdown. I, I found on the internet his leather jacket. And it is like a one-for-one one recreation of this jacket. It's got like, it's a red leather jacket with a tiger print on the back and like uh, wear a bunch of buckles and nonsense. It looks ridiculous. And uh, I should not be wearing this. I do not look like this character whatsoever. But I was like, what the hell? I like it. I like the game. It's fun. Um, so I have like the yellow sunglasses I have, in fact, so I probably have it somewhere in here. He has what is essentially a lightsaber. Uh, so I bought a lightsaber and like put a little bit of like the, the accents on it that makes it different from an actual lightsaber, mm -hmm. that sort of a thing. Um, so like, that's the Halloween costume I really put the most effort into, I think. Cause when I was a kid, it was just like, I just sort of went to the store a week before and was like, uh, that one, that's fine. Right. 
I was never a big like, you know, I my costume has to be perfect. I have to have everything, you know, laid out for me. Uh, whenever I was younger, but as it's funny, as an adult, I care more about these things than than I did when I was a kid. Cool. So, if, I, I can't remember any anything that I used to dress up as a kid. If I'm being brutally honest with you, the only thing that I can remember, and uh, uh, MPI might en- might enjoy this, is about four years ago. Um, there was a party. Um, like a like a uh, like a nightclub theme nightclub event and loads of my friends were coming to it and it was a for Halloween and I went dressed in a in a full Batman bodysuit, yeah, um, with a with a mask on as well. And <laughs> I, I asked, but, but I was at, um, my my other half before I was like, do I still have it? Like, I was like leaning down, I was like, is that, have I still got the mask somewhere? And I was Where like, is it? <laughs> but I don't know where I don't know where it is. But yeah, I did that. But it was a full body. It was a full bodysuit with a cape. And, and a mask, Gosh. and uh, I spent awesome. six hours in that thing on the oh drink, Gosh. dancing <laughs> in a nightclub. But it was great because everyone wanted to, because they didn't know who you were. There's no face to it, so right. everybody wanted a photograph of the Batman. Right. It was just so I had a good night in that sense, but um, that's probably as much as as much as I can think of. That uh, actually reminds me of a story. Uh, MPI was was your costume. The, uh, the Batman theme night that we did. Was it what? Was was it going to be the Batman theme night that we did a few um, years back? It, that's if that's not it, that's up there. Right. Okay. So, um, one year we all went out to the bars whenever I still lived in the same town as MPI did. Uh, and this photo is in his house, like to this day. Uh, we all did Batman villains. Um, and I, uh, I ended up somehow as the tallest person in the group, I somehow ended up being penguin. <laughs> I don't know how the logic or any of that what? shook out for that idea. You're so much taller than he is. I know, but I was also the roundest, I guess. Um, so, you know, it worked. I'm fat. It's fine. Um, so it just sort of worked out that way that I had the umbrella and I had and I had a top hat for some reason. I don't even remember why I had a top hat. I think that but was I, more of the reason was that you was that you had all the it. stuff for it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I just sort of went with it. Um, but that night was stellar. We ran into a Batman at the bar. Yes. And yes. we just we just started giving him crap constantly. The whole time. Do you remember what else happened with a Batman? <laughs> Uh, vaguely so, but you, you tell the story better than I Okay, do. so, uh, like you said, we all did Batman villains. We had him as Penguin, Kate and I were Harley and Joker, and mm. stayed 100% in character pretty much the whole night. Uh, we had a Poison Ivy, a cat, a Catwoman, we had a Two-Face, a Two-Face and uh, Riddler, Yes, and that's it. So, that's it, yeah. Two-Face oh, and... Me. Two Face and Catwoman were are a couple, and he's there with me. We're all hanging out and talking. He's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go get something out of my car. I don't remember what it was, but he goes to get something out of his car, and someone dressed as Batman was trying to break into someone dressed as Two Face's car. What? How weird is that? Like, what? yeah, I know. It's first, super bizarre. First to walk Batman up on somebody has- breaking into your car in general, and then it being. Gotham superhero breaking into Two Face's car. <laughs> <laughs> How quickly the tide's turning, Gotham! Man. Yeah. <laughs> Times How got rough in Gotham. No. Bruce Wayne's a bit down and out, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wayne Tech's not doing hot. No, nope. mm. no, nope, unfortunately not. Can I boo Zig for that terrible pun he just put in chat? No, that was beautiful. Can I please boo him? I have an emote and everything to boo him. Uh, for those oh listening to the goodness. audio version, for those listening to the audio version on Spotify or wherever you get your podcast, or I listen to the show. You're welcome for the plug, by the way. Um, <laughs> at least he didn't hit and run and leave Harvey with a dent. <laughs> boo! Boo! You're getting my boo emote, Zig. I Terrible. am allowed to boo you, and I just used my boo. So. <laughs> I liked wow. it. <laughs> Boo. Unacceptable condition. Unacceptable. <laughs> Unacceptable conditions. Unacceptable. 
Okay. Oh, that was bad. That so was bad. Pretty bad. How confident do you guys feel about some Halloween trivia? Not at all. Let's do it. Great. Me, 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 me. Uh, so some of them are pretty easy. Some of them are a little weird. And we'll go through all the ones that I have prepared. Because I we went to a Halloween trivia like a week ago. And uh. most of these are things that I remembered from it. Um, uh-huh. And if we, when we get through all these, I will, uh, I will Google search some more if we want to keep going with them. But uh-huh. here's how we'll do it. We'll do it the same way we always do it. I will um, give the question, and either the first person that answers it can take it and get it right. If nobody really feels comfortable, we'll go around to all three of you, and you can guess. No googling, no cheating. Oh. Honor system. Here we go. And chat, no cheating either. Yeah. All right. So yeah, Google chat, give them. Okay. Chat, give them a few, a few seconds to answer. Um, here we go. The first Lord one. <laughs> In what country did Halloween originate? Oh, I used to know this, but I don't anymore. But it's it's. it's... Mm. Are we talking Halloween as in like what we know today is? I didn't hear a word you just said. <laughs> I want to I want to say America purely because it's it's very paganized and Ireland. Mallet gets it. Ireland. Ah, Sam, my brain. Yes. Sam, or however you pronounce it, that sounds Irish. So. Yeah, my brain was saying Denmark for some reason, and I knew that was it's a wrong. fairly solid guess though. Yeah. Okay, uh, so Halloween is reported to be the third most popular night to throw a party of the year. What are the first two most popular nights? Bonfire. Well, these this would be like a holiday or a very a specific holiday, night. Yeah. We don't get bonfire days here. I wish we did. Yeah. They're amazing, but we don't get them here. Yeah, and uh, it's not a get-together. It's a party. There's... Apparently a difference. Uh, Worldwide or... Um, uh, so this is in America, to be fair. Right, okay. I'm going to go... Is it 5th of July? Is it you guys have? 4th. 4th of July, close, sorry. Yeah. 4th yeah. of July I'm going to go for? Because that's... That, there's all, I always hear a lot about that. That is not one of them. Believe it or not. I was going to say... Huh, yeah, that's kind of weird. I was going to say New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. You want to party on New Year's Day? I mean, yes. what else are we doing? <laughs> Nursing the hangover from the New Year's Eve party. I, I'm not working. Let's keep it going, man. <laughs> One of them's going to have to be New Year's Eve, surely. Yeah. Uh, New Year's yeah. Day I'm... is absolutely not it. <laughs> I uh, Listen, I don't know what y'all do on New Year's Day. I keep drinking. That's me. I eat pizza. Because my friend holds giant parties. Does Super Bowl Sunday count as a holiday? It's not a holiday. But that's the next one. (laughs) Yep. So New Year's Eve and Super Bowl Sunday. So those are American. At least one of them is horribly American. Well, this year's Super Bowl is going to suck because it's going to be the Patriots again and screw them. So. Uh, so I hate uh, the Patriots. I know football. Yeah, well, it's just fun to mock MPI for his team. So. What's your ah, record yes. this year? Same as yours. That's fine. It's getting saucy. It's okay. America <laughs> likes our team better. Uh, except the time we wrecked you guys on Thanksgiving. That's fine. We're still the most valuable sports wow. franchise in the world. Wow. The world. Yeah, but when's the last time y'all made the Super Bowl? When's the last time y'all... How many Super Bowl rings y'all got? <laughs> When's the last time y'all were relevant? Right now! <laughs> Not really. It's fine. You can be as wrong as you want with uh, Cam Newton and his whatever the hell hat we wears so, this well, week. Well, given that Cam's been out rehabbing his foot for the last few weeks... And <laughs> so I like basketball. <laughs> That's so my for, sport. So, chat, MPI cheers for the Dallas Cowboys. Boys and I cheer for the best team in the NFL, the Carolina Panthers. Heck yeah! And more importantly, it's an odd-numbered year, so we're gonna do great. Yes, I do not antagonize everything. Who started so that? <laughs> Mal. You're so mean. Mal, one hundred percent started that. Yeah, but you're still so mean to me. I'm gonna cry. That's it. I'm muting her in Discord. It's happening. <laughs> 
She can't even guess the next question. Um. Uh, So where is Transylvania located? Say that again, I'm sorry. Where is Transylvania located? Transylvania located. Like the modern day Transylvania. Uh, Romania. Correct. Oh. Uh, There's a Transylvania County in North Carolina. There is. Yeah, it's up in the mountains. Tiny. (laughs) So this candy that is associated with Halloween was originally used as chicken feed. (laughs) Candy Candy corn. corn. Yeah, it's that one. It's that one. I'm glad that we eat that now. (laughs) So um, this one has multiple answers, and I will accept any of them. What was used to carve jack-o'-lanterns before pumpkins? Oh. Oh, I don't know this one as well. Because mm. they're extremely difficult to cut. Oh, I'm trying to think. Shoot. Because I know that uh, various gourds of shapes and sizes have been used. Correct. That is one yeah. of them. Cool. Do you just wanna... gourd? You're just giving me the whole family of gourds? Well, yeah. Oh, I can't even think of the name. I know what it is. I can, I can so, remember cutting one. Watermelons, kinda... by any chance? No, not, not watermelons. Not, it's not watermelons. <laughs> there, that would be funny, though. <laughs> there are probably give me, other give ones. Me the first letter. Give me the first letter. Well, uh, one of them is starts with a P. P. The other one starts with a T. It's the one with the P I'm thinking of, and I kind of think of what it is. A potato. Pineapple? Potatoes. And as soon as I said pineapple, I realized exactly how stupid that was. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a cool jack-o'-lantern. That would actually be a pretty cool It would take some, yeah. some effort, but it'd be pretty freaking cool. Yeah, right. but why would you carve up a pineapple when you could eat pineapple? That's That's a fair point. It's true. Well, I mean, yeah. you have to, like, pull the insides out of it like you would a pumpkin. Yeah, but I'd want to eat the insides of it. That's fine. Eat that while you carve the outside of it. People do that with pumpkin stuff. Hang on. Uh, really? Speaking of uh, carving the inside of a pineapple, there's a YouTube video out there somewhere. of There's this weird mechanism that you could like plunge into the pineapple and then crank for a very long time. We had one of those. Pull out the whole inside of the pineapple. It's nuts. We used it one time and it broke. <laughs> Technology is amazing, folks. We can gut a pineapple with some plastic in our minds. It's yep. incredible. Mm-hmm. God bless this great world we live in. All right. Um, I don't know how much you guys know about horror movies, but that's our next one. Okay. Oh, boy. So, a killer in prison for killing his sister breaks out to attempt to kill his other sister in the plot of this horror franchise. <laughs> I know this one. What is it? God, that. I want to give other people the chance to answer. That sounds so familiar, and I, I'm between two in my brain. Oh, I'm out. <laughs> oh, okay. It's between <clears throat> one of two, and I'm just gonna go ahead. And say, no, it's definitely not Halloween. I'm wrong. Never mind. Get it. No, you were right, you were man. Right. It's Halloween. Oh, Halloween. dang it. What oh. was the other one? I was between Halloween and Friday the 13th. Mm. And I was like, it's one of those. No, Friday the 13th is not that one. <laughs> That's yeah. not that. Um, <clears throat> so, staying on Halloween, who played Laurie Strode in the original movie? <laughs> I know this one too. <laughs> She was also in the newest one. Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> yep. I was literally about to go, hey, Google. <laughs> I know, I, oh, it actually went off. I, it oh, went off. No, the Sorry. only reason I know this is because of Dead by Daylight. Both oh, Michael right. Myers and Laurie Strode are as a killer and survivor, respectively. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> right. Right. I've never actually seen any of the movies. So, like, I knew she was in that movie. I didn't know the name of the character. So, like, you hit me with a character name, and I'm just like, oh, God. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah. Um, so, this movie is a famous slasher franchise where camp counselors trying to survive being attacked. Say that again, sorry. 
Uh, so in this popular, fam- this famous slasher franchise, camp counselors trying to survive being attacked at Camp Crystal Lake. <laughs> wow, you just, wow. All right, 13. There you go. Yeah. I did it. Okay. Yay! I so, did it. staying on Friday the 13th, everyone knows the the famous, the sh- sh- that sound? Right. What is actually being said during that moment that people typically don't realize is being said? Hmm. And I will say that this has not always been the case in the films. It was at one point uh, changed out so nobody can yell at me and say, it's not always been that way, MPI, because I'm sure somebody said it exactly like that. Uh, didn't, didn't, didn't the game tell you what it was? So a, a lot of people think he says it's it's Chi Chi Ha Ha. Oh, it's Kiki Mama. It's Kiki right? Mama for Kill Them Mommy. Because at one point, whenever he's a kid and is is uh, having his mom is killing people, he's saying he it says Kill Them Mommy. So he says Kiki. It's Kiki Mama, and then ha. <laughs> so there you go. <clears throat> Today um, I learned what I learned in boating school is blankety, blankety, blankety blank. blank. Uh, so, the Stanley Hotel was the inspiration for what movie and book? Uh, Stanley Hotel. Uh, oh, oh, Shining. Oh, oh. Yes. Yep. yep. And more uh, recently in the news, Doctor Sleep, which yeah. is the new movie coming out soon. Yes. Right. All right. This is the last one that I have prepared, so we can uh, we can go on a wild Google spree after this, or we can uh, move to something else about Halloween if you want to. This franchise, with over a dozen films, is based off of true events that happened in a house at one twelve Ocean Avenue. It blew my mind that there were dozens of these. I, I can think of loads of films, but I don't know if it's 12, but um, Amityville? Is, um, is it that one? Yeah, uh, Amityville um, Horror. That's it. Uh, Amityville oh, Horror, yeah. Good job. <laughs> yeah, so there are 12 of those things. <laughs> I thought there were like two. Yeah, there's the original, the one with Ryan Reynolds, and then <laughs> whatever else those Another. other ones are. <laughs> I, I know there's yeah. an obscene amount, but it means it was 12. Street. Nightmare on Elm Street? Yeah, well, I figured that I think there are at least 12 films. That franchise. Oh, I'm sure there are, but it didn't happen at 112 Ocean Avenue. It happened on Elm well, Street. I have never seen the movies. What's the, the movie original? called? I don't know. It's called Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, I don't know that it takes place on, like, all of it takes place on Elm Street. That's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm just saying things to rile him up. Cause <clears throat> That's what it's called. <laughs> Chat, help me. <laughs> <laughs> Help me, I am losing my mind. Now I'm just trying to make him do that, because it's funny. All right. uh, I want to do more horror movie ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, So let's see. Oh, I don't want to take a quiz. I I already want the answers, (laughs) you big dumb. And now we're just doing BuzzFeed quiz on on the air. (laughs) This is where we're at, people. Welcome aboard. Uh, Speaking of horror franchises that have gone on for like an absurdly long time and nobody knew there was more than one of them did you know that there are like nine children of the corn movies yes and they like all progressively get worse so my roommate my now former roommate uh thank god because it's halloween time and i'd have to watch a bunch of terrible horror movies if i still lived with them um bought every single one of them on dvd and one halloween sat through and watched like five of them back to back to back the first one is like okay. The entire rest of them have absolutely no reason to exist, and they offend me for existing. There's Isn't like, that how most horror franchises, like the first one's good, and maybe like a couple in there are decent, and then the rest of them are just like. I mean, as someone who is not a big horror fan and really only experienced that through Saw, which I was kind of into. Mm, um good franchise I, that's 
always been kind of my assumption as well is that it just sort of there's one maybe two that are really good and then the rest of it sort of falls apart look man that if, was like me and paranormal activity oh God. yeah same thing i yeah. even like the first one in that honestly <laughs> this is not a franchise for me uh but look man if you're gonna tell me that jason x isn't fantastic where he's literally on a spaceship killing people i don't i don't know what is good anymore It's the let's just all stew in the silence of that thought. Let's just all let's just all take that in. Let's just breathe it in as oxygen. Please that. smell the silent judgment. <laughs> yeah, I like uh, dumb horror movies too, though. Those are fun. That's totally fine. It's valid. Uh, so Please. here's another one about Halloween. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, what? Is the the mask that he wears? Who act? Who, there's an actual person, an actual actor. Whose face is that on the mask? Which franchise are we talking? Halloween. About? Hmm. I wouldn't know the actor. So they spray painted it and re and kind of like recut the eye holes. Oh, I oh, because they shoot. had such a, a a a small budget for the film that this was the way they had to do it. Oh shoot! I've seen this talked about. Mm. Yeah, I, I've got nothing, dog. Wasn't it like a, it was a Star Trek thing? Wasn't it like? What... Your microphone cut out ninety percent of that. My after Star Trek. It was a Star Trek thing, right? Like it was William Shatner or Leonard Nimoy or something. It's William right? Shatner. <laughs> huh? It was a William Shatner mask. Um, wow! From the Devil's that. Reign <clears throat> that they spray you know, painted. Now that you say that, I can kind of like in my mind's eye kind of see it. Mm-hmm. But like, if if you had just pulled me off the street and asked me, like, put a gun to my head, answer this question, or I die, my brain pavement, dude, I'm done. Yeah. Like, the been. only reason I knew that is this YouTube channel I watched called Dead Meat, and he does this series mm. called The Kill Count, where he goes through horror movies and counts all the kills that happen but he also talks a lot about the behind the scenes and what goes into making some of these movies and i remember him bringing that up when he did the halloween series i've never actually seen any of these movies (laughs) i have not seen a single one of these i just love that youtube channel that's not a bad way to know it though no (laughs) that there that link that image Mm -hmm. that i've just put in there i I would have I never knew that, and now that I'm staring at an image, I can't unsee that. <laughs> right? Yeah, like, yep. you can't unsee yep. it once you know stuff like that. How weird is that? 100%. It's, like, it's one for one, dude. It is one for one. I will, I will never be able to look at young William Shatner for the rest of my life. So, I just can't well, look at him. I'm pretty William sure... kind of difficult to look at, so... Fair point. I think it was the original one, but the first time that I watched Halloween, there's a part where his mask gets pulled off, and he just holds it and stares at it. Like, it's just in the middle of a chase. Like, Jamie Lee Curtis, like, swipes at him, and his mask falls off, and it's in his hands, and he just goes... And I laughed for 20 minutes. I don't know why. It was just (laughs) that he stopped, stared at the mask, and then put it back on and kept chasing. I was like, what is happening? It was just so out of place that it made me laugh. I don't know why. Huh. But yeah, that was fun. Oy, my head hurts. That sucks. I'm really hoping all this blood comes off. Otherwise, my bosses are going to have questions in the morning. And <laughs> yeah. Eh, I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Probably, maybe. I don't know. It probably, maybe. probably, maybe not. They're Possibly. probably going to be upset about it. Like, well, no, they wouldn't be upset about it. They'd ask if I got punched in the face. No, it's 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 Halloween time. Mm. You're only one day away from actual Halloween. Yeah, right. I know, but I work at a mortgage company. We don't have fun when it comes to outfits. Yeah, that's all, fair. All you have to do is like, hey, what's what's up with things on your face? You just go, it's spooky, <laughs> and you walk away. What's again, walk. mortgage company? What, what we don't, don't get to have care. fun. What thing on don't my face? Care. There's nothing on my no, face. I do. I have to pay rent, man. <laughs> I, fair, fair point. Very. Fair <laughs> like, point. I have to pay. I have to pay the bills. And yeah. Pay. All right. Well, uh, trust uh, me. I know. Moving into this thing, with all these boxes. Thing. Yeah. God, paying all this by myself. America, 2019. Anyway. Mm. Whoop, whoop. I think I found a new apartment. I'm very excited about Ooh, it. Ooh, that's fun. 
There well, you go. yeah, well, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm really hoping it pans out because this one is a two bedroom, two story apartment that's only about $150 more than I'm paying for my 600 square foot studio without a door. So, um, I'm really hoping it works out because then I can have a gaming room. Yes. That would be nice. I, know, I can hang up all my art needs and all my, all my figurines and my Triwizard Cup and hopefully yeah. get to use all those candles that I can't use because we're not allowed to burn candles here. <laughs> and people keep giving me candles for some reason. <laughs> and I'm like, what do I do with this thing now? Yeah, I've got like four or five. Kitty! There's a cat! <gasps> cat! There's a cat! Oh, she, she, she won't stop clicking the carpet behind me. <laughs> Aww. Hi, kitty! What's the kitty's name? She's called Mitzi. Mitzi. Hi, Mitzi. Oh, it's so cute. She's, she's in the baby position, so now she'll just sit here and get her belly rubbed like this for ages and ages. Yes. Aww. We have a cat that looks almost exactly like her named Penny that does the same thing, but only for me. <laughs> We, we call that oh! we call that Mitzi. Look, look at that forehead. Don't know if you can make it out. Oh, oh I can kind of see it. Oh yeah, the M, the big M. Yeah. Look at that. Who's your good cat? Go oh, it's so cute. Oh, Mitzi's so just cute. like, nope, don't. No, I did not get paid for this appearance. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I will. Call my agent. I assume that the check's in the mail. Right. <laughs> true. Right. Extra big true treats. Yeah. Extra treats. Oh, Penny's over here asleep. I'm not going to pick her up and disturb her. She's Where's Loki? <laughs> Dead? He's, probably in... Who knows? He's probably in the bedroom with Kate. He likes to lay in there a lot with her when she's in there. So, cool. He's probably hanging out in there. Seems legit. Uh, well, guys, we are uh, at almost an hour and a half. So why don't we start wrapping things up? Because we got to go through the round robin of who's who, what's what, and uh, all that fun stuff. Uh, so... Philbo, dude, thanks again mm -hmm. for coming on. I appreciate it, man. Um, let the people know where they can find you, what you got going on, when you stream, if you have any big events coming up, all that fun stuff. Um, so um, it's twitch.tv for slash Philbo. I'm going to be streaming every Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and uh, on the occasional Sundays. Um, you can get me on Twitter. You can get me on Instagram now. I've just set one of them up because, you know, I have to be popular and being with the in trends and whatnot. Um, true, true. Someone needs to look after that for me. Um, what was the other thing you said? Sorry. Um, just if you have any any big things coming up for your stream, any events, anything like that. I'm going to be doing, so like I said earlier, um, 19th of November is my one year uh, affiliate anniversary, as I guess you could call it, lad. Um, so I'm gonna do a subathon on nice uh, twenty and a twenty four hour stream, well potentially twenty four hour stream on that day. So I've got uh, I've got four days off work planned already. So um, it'll go on for as long as it goes on, the ma up to a maximum of twenty four hours. Um, more information because it's the first time I've announced it. More information that will be available soon. Uh, I'll go on my usual uh, in my Discord and my and my my social media. Um, and yeah, it's probably about the about the biggest thing I've got going on so far. It's awesome. That's exciting. Congratulations on the almost a year. Um, Thank you. That'll be a, a fun day. I've done a couple subathons and they're fun. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. Uh, Fishhook, man, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for joining us. Uh, same thing, man. Uh, let the people know where they can find you, what you got going on, and if you have any events coming up. 10-4. Uh, so I stream every single Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday from 3 to 6-ish Eastern time. Uh, over at Mixer, mixer.com slash fishhookfpc. Uh, and if I plan anything bonus-wise, um, you can also find it on my Twitter, which is the same thing, twitter.com slash fishhookfpc. Um, like I said, I, I've recently set up, uh, because I just moved into this new apartment, I finally have a setup where I can reasonably have everything connected to the internet and I can play console games again, which is exciting. Um, so I'm going to be busting out a lot of Xbox stuff, a lot of stuff on Game Pass. I'm going to try to keep up with a lot of that stuff. Uh, I've recently returned to playing Forza Horizon 4 again. So a lot more racing. If you're into racing games, that's, that's something that you could absolutely count on me for at least once a week. Uh, and I've recently started the Sunday stream. Sunday, I feel like is going to be sort of the time slot for, uh, trading card games. Um, because it's more of a chill day and I'm not expecting as many people to come on by um and you know especially during football season people mm -hmm. on sunday are just like you know they're they're not really looking to watch like sports games and things like that so uh just doing something different on that day 
And uh, I also packed an announcement sort of in the back for the show. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm starting a Discord. Hey! I, I have the Discord channel all set up, and I will be to that on my Twitter after we... So um, you can come join my uh, my Discord. I call it Fish Hooks Watering Hole, because I could go over the better <laughs> day. There you go. Um, so uh, come join the watering hole. Come come around the table, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll chat. We'll hang out. Heck yeah, man. Awesome. So that is uh, on your Twitter, you said? Yeah, I literally, once we go off the air, I'm going to post the link. Yep, so. there you go. So twitter.com forward slash fishhook games, if I'm remembering fish correctly. Fishhook FPC. I finally got it changed. Oh, you finally got it changed. Yay! Attaboy. Yeah. So there yeah. it is. Fishhook FPC Errorware now. Errorware. Well, cool. Um, well, thanks, man, for coming on again. I appreciate it. Of Mallet, course. we're going to throw it to you. I know. I know you got some stuff to talk about, but where can the people find you? When do you stream? And what are all of your announcements? Because I know you got some. I do have some. Um, Twitch.tv slash Mallet Editor. For the about the last two months due to health issues and work issues and all that jazz, but I am making my grand epic. This Saturday, starting at 9 a.m., we are doing the 24-hour extra life stream raising money for duke children's hospital i've got a lot of incentives if you donate five dollars i'm gonna eat a nasty disgusting jelly bean if you donate 20 you can make me do something stupid in game 50 you can make me do something stupid all game 100 i'm getting a pie slammed in my face and 200 i'm going to eat a carolina Re camera and watch me cry um <laughs> Last year, we were super close to $1,000. I think we hit about 800 and I know we can pass that this year. So that is my grand return to Twitch. We're going to be playing Dead by Daylight. We're going to be playing Destiny. We're going to be playing Battlefield Five. probably some Twitch things at 4 in the morning just to annoy everybody else I'm with. I don't know. I don't care. It's for the children. So I hope everybody comes and hangs out because I'm very excited to be back. Well, after the 24-hour stream, we're going to figure out a schedule that doesn't hurt my back so much. More likely than not, it's going to be Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, but it really, like, and Tuesday being here, but it really does depend, because I'm 25 going on 90, and I'm falling. <laughs> Yay! So, same, same energy, dude. My body is just a <laughs> mess. I feel you. Yeah. So I don't know where I'm going to be streaming wise, but I'm going to do my best. So yay. There you go. For so yeah, the guys. Kids. For the kids. If you're for free this Saturday, stop by Mallet Editor's stream at any point in time and uh, give her some encouragement and some support to keep her going because those marathon streams are tough. So oh, yeah. mm, definitely. Uh, guys, as always, this episode will be up on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube tomorrow, uh, tomorrow afternoon-ish. Um, and I think we'll probably keep this start time going forward of uh, 8 Eastern instead of 9. Uh, it works a lot better for Mallet. She can uh, mm -hmm. actually, you know, get some sleep uh, before work and not have to worry about or being a play. Or just get stuff done in the evenings. Yeah, That's or just, nice. you know, do things outside of this, so... Uh, we'll stick with that, guys. You can always find me at twitch.tv slash Mr. Instinct. Uh, tomorrow, we have a fun special morning planned. Uh, I have Layers of Fear 2 that I got from Gun Media, and we are going to have our mm, good friend Nick awesome. joining us again uh, to get scared. That is uh, like our favorite thing to do is have him come on the stream and play horror games. So we're going to be doing that in the morning. And then Thursday, all day long, we're playing Luigi's Mansion 3. Uh, in celebration yeah. of Halloween Yay. and Luigi's Mansion 3 releasing. Uh, I have a special secret Halloween costume planned that day that I'm not telling anyone. So if you want to see what it is, you got to come by the stream. Uh, and I'm just going to say that it's topical to Luigi's Mansion. But that's it. And it's not what you think it is. Uh, so, guys, thanks for hanging out on the show. Mario. Thanks for listening. All of you guys, thanks for joining. Mario. It's not Mario. It's a good guess, though. <laughs> Uh, again, this will be up on your favorite podcasting platform and YouTube tomorrow. If you are listening on one of those places, 
feel free to leave reviews, comments, all of those things. It helps us know what we're doing right, what you like, and uh, helps the show grow. So please feel free to do those things. We'd appreciate it. If you have anything that you want to talk about, you can join our Discord. You can tweet at us. You can even email us at truetalk at truegaming.com for those of you that still send emails to people. Uh, you, you can do that. Do you have an email address? We sure do. Uh, it's, you know that? It's the one that's where we use to sign up for like Twitter and everything, but I can also access it for emails. Um, okay. So guys, feel free to email us with questions, topics, or drop them in the Discord or on Twitter. We are going to raid another uh, true streamer. We're going to go raid Miss Hobo Slayer. She has recently Yay! made a return Yay! after a short break. Um, so let's go show her some support and love. Show her that true fam love. And uh, we'll see you guys next Tuesday for another podcast. Everybody have a safe, fun, happy Halloween. We'll catch you all next time. Bye.